I'm Steven Sotchuk, an Assistant Managing Editor here at Education Week. We wanted to give you some insight into the latest look at student achievement on the nation's report card. This test matters because it's the only national gauge of student learning that's consistent across all the states. It's given every few years to samples of fourth and eighth graders. I'll warn you up front, the news isn't great, and it requires all of us to ask ourselves, what can we do as educators to focus our work on core instructional matters? How can we support those students furthest behind? What did NAEP find this year? The National Assessment of Educational Progress, or NAEP as the report card is formally known, was last given in 2022. Here's what happened two years later in 2024. In both fourth grade and eighth grade reading, scores fell by two points. Nearly 40% of fourth graders, a recent record, couldn't order the events in a story or understand the main purpose of a passage. In math, scores rebounded slightly in fourth grade and were flat in eighth grade. What's driving the score declines? NAEP also breaks down trends into different groups of performance. Those students who scored at the highest levels, average performers, and those at the bottom end. When you look at trends in those groupings, important patterns emerge. Here's a look at the grade eight math scores. Average performance looks steady, but note where we've marked two trends in red. The best performing students did better and the worst continued to lose ground. That's a disturbing sign that some kids are struggling more and more with the key content in middle school grades, like fractions, and it will be harder for them to catch up later. This pattern of a bigger gap in performance among high and low achieving students is corroborated on other international exams, and it's driving the patterns of performance we see across this year's NAEP subjects. And while the pandemic and its disruptions just definitely affected these patterns, these trends in performance started long before COVID-19. There's a bigger story here that goes beyond that disruption. Is there any good news? In about 15 states and in many cities, we did see improvements in fourth grade math, though it mostly wasn't enough to make up for declines that occurred during the pandemic. One state, Alabama, improved six points in math at that grade, meaning its students are now doing better than they did in 2019. In reading, Louisiana is the sole state to have improved by a significant margin since 2019. How should we interpret the scores? It's a great question, and it's one without a great answer. NAEP is really good at telling us the what, but it's not as good at telling us the why. And it's especially hard when you consider that the level of performance in both reading and math right now puts students back at the level of performance that they were in in the mid-1990s. The decline is actually a 10-year phenomenon. You'll be hearing a lot of storylines from politicians and pundits, often eager to present policy solutions like vouchers or curriculum reforms, more school funding, and so on. Be cautious about simple explanations and try to corroborate theories with evidence from other sources. Here are some of the best guess theories that my reporters have heard from their sources in trying to make sense of the NAEP, and we'll look at each of them in turn. Absenteeism. The NAEP data show that while student absenteeism has improved since 2022, the last time the test was given, it's still pretty high. And when kids aren't in school, they can't learn. Data show a relationship between absenteeism rates and performance. Reading volume. Recently, my reporter Sarah Schwartz reported on a gauge of adult literacy and found that that had fallen too. So this reading phenomenon isn't limited to kids. That potentially lends some credence to theories that screen time and cell phone use and decline in pleasure reading could be partly driving these results. Middle school math. Middle school math continues to be a pain point for a lot of students. It's where we assume students have learned fundamental arithmetic and we begin to introduce them to more abstract representations and manipulations beyond whole numbers. Kids that haven't mastered the foundations are going to struggle in this area. Accountability. This is probably the most controversial theory. As unpopular as No Child Left Behind's aggressive accountability regimes were, the declines on NAEP roughly parallel the looser approach taken by the feds from about 2016 onward. Neither the administrations of Education Secretaries Betsy DeVos nor Miguel Cardona put a lot of emphasis on shoring up accountability. Thanks for joining me and remember to visit edweek.org for all our coverage of NAEP.